Good evening, California Creek Baptist Church. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, you are probably inside as it is raining here at my house. I'm actually coming to you from a little different location in the house. I am in what I call the comfy chair. And so just for a few minutes tonight I don't want to take a lot of your time but I want to talk with everyone tonight about truth the world is searching for truth what we know to be true is that even before COVID-19 pandemic that the world is seeking truth they're trying to figure out what is fact. They're trying to figure out what is fiction. Not only um, on a surface level, but a deep spiritual level, many people are searching for what is truth. I, I want to welcome you to uh, my home, into my home through Facebook Live. I want to welcome you as again I'm here in my comfy chair and I want you to get your Bible and turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and get comfortable uh, with us grab you a pen a pencil um, piece of paper to take some notes on and get you a cup of coffee and let's uh, dive into God's Word but we are going to be talking about truth tonight from his word if you don't mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer now and ask for the Holy Spirit to come where you are and I am uh, to minister to us during this time and grow us from his word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for uh, this day. We thank you for uh, the Holy Spirit that is with each and every one of us in our homes as we open up the scripture. I pray that you will help us tonight to understand truth. I pray that your word that we believe is inerrant and infallible will speak to us. And so God, we thank you and praise you for how you're going to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me, let me ask everybody a question uh, tonight, and really this is a very personal question for, for just you. Um, have you ever in your personal life asked yourself or asked the question to God, God, are you really the real deal? I don't think that we need to feel bad for asking God questions. As many of you know me, you know that Thomas is my favorite disciple. Yes, Thomas, the one that was given uh, the nickname Doubting Thomas. He is the one, if you remember, that always seemed to ask or question Jesus Christ along the way. And so when we think about the doubting Thomas, I, I think of an instant in Scripture where Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's not really understanding. And what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 14 is future events that were to come and that he was going to die and that he was going to be placed in a grave and that three days later he would arise. Here's Thomas. Hey, Jesus, I got a question I don't understand. And Jesus says, what, Thomas? And Thomas says, I don't understand what you're talking about. And Jesus made it really plain and simple in John chapter 14 in verse number six. He says, I am, Jesus said about himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man will come unto the Father except by trusting and believing in me. So it's really incredible that through uh, Thomas' doubts, we even today are given the awesome promise that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And then later, after Jesus' resurrection, the other disciples, they had the opportunity to see Jesus, and they were telling Thomas, Thomas, he's alive. 
just like what he said, he's alive. Thomas says, listen, you guys are crazy. The only way that I'm going to believe is to see uh, his nail-pierced hands and his feet and his side. And if you remember, Jesus showed up and he revealed himself to Thomas and Thomas then believed. And so what I want you to understand is, as a follower of Christ, it's okay to ask questions. You're not going to get an answer unless you ask questions. I know when my children were a little smaller and those that's had children and maybe you've had grandchildren, I'll be honest with you, when they were about two, three, four, five years old, it was, why this, daddy? Why this, daddy? What does this do? What does this mean? And so we need to view our questions to God as uh, you and I growing in our relationship with him. If you want to know something from God, you need to ask. And so when we think about doubt and we think about truth and we think about questioning God, I think that all of us, if we'll be real honest, we've been there in our life where we've questioned him. Uh, we've questioned why COVID-19. We've questioned why this financial hardship. We've questioned why this physical pain and sickness. Why, God, are you allowing me uh, to suffer? Maybe you're even questioning God on behalf of your children. So it, it, where, whatever your situation you're in or wherever you've been and where you're going, I want you to understand it's okay to ask questions. But I also want everyone to understand is that there is truth. And you can write this down in your paper. You can jot it down in the front of your Bible. You really should put it somewhere that God is truth. God cannot lie. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to lead you astray. You've got to understand the most important thing that each and, uh, each and every one of us has is a soul and the ability, because we're humanity, to have a relationship with Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And because we have that Holy Spirit with us, we can know the truth. And so when we think about understanding the truth, I understand that there are folks, and maybe you, you may be listening in, and you may say, well, truth is bondage. Knowing the truth of, of the Bible, it, it bounds me. It, it binds me down. Um, there's also uh, this thought process that I should just do whatever I like. There is nobody, there's no God, there's no being that should tell me exactly what I should do. Well, when we look into the Bible, we see that God's word is truth, but God's word is truth and revealed to us for our benefit. It, it's, it is a light in darkness. That's what we see in 1 John, that the truth is light. Christ is light. If you want to understand uh, your struggle, you must understand and be tapped into the truth. And there, with truth is humanism, this humanistic teaching and view, again, that, well, as long as I'm doing something in my life and it's not hurting anybody else, then it must be okay. Let me tell you something. What we learn from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, from a man named Solomon who had wisdom, who had wealth, and I want everyone to listen he had been with multiple women. He had a lifestyle that many people would look at and say, awesome life. That, that guy has it going on. And he uh, had the family heritage. He seemingly was the total package. And then we read in Ecclesiastes chapter number one, when he starts out this book full of wisdom, he says, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, listen now, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, listen, all is vanity. Let me interpret what he says. This man who has all the wealth in the world, who has a palace to lay 
in which he lives and he lays his head down at night on, uh, you know, on a posh pillow, a man who has beautiful women all around him. He's tried everything under the sun and what he says, it's all emptiness. Isn't that sad? Isn't it sad that he says, I've, I've had it all, but it's all empty. Let me ask you a question today. Have you tried the world? Have you tried what the world has to offer? Let me say, you know, I, I pastor a church. I know Christ is my Savior, but I've tried many things that the world has to offer. And I'm not going to sit here tonight and just list things off I've tried. That's between me and God, and it's your life's between you and him. But let me say, you can't hide anything from God. But I want to say that everything I've tried in the world, it's temporary. It's temporary pleasure. It brings about temporary fun and enjoyment. The only thing that's going to last in your life, friend, is having a true, real relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what we talked about last time, uh, last Wednesday, I believe, from the book of James chapter 1, is that having a true, genuine faith in Christ and trusting Him with your life, that's where you're going to get joy. Happiness comes from happenstance. Sure, there are a lot of things that make us happy, but let me say this. This man Solomon says, man, I've tried it all, and everything I've tried on this earth has left me empty. Friend, have you tried drugs and it's left you empty? Have you tried uh, different sexual pleasures outside of marriage that God has ordained and it's left you empty? Have you tried a needle? Have you tried a pill bottle? Have you, uh, you know, there's many different things that we can become addicted to. I, I want you to stop and think just for a minute. You know, what is truth? The world is searching for truth. Just the other day, I lost something that was very, very important. And I'm going to be open and honest with you. I did a wedding, my cousin's wedding, two or three weeks ago. And I placed the marriage license in my little journal that I had that day. And I lost that journal. I, I lost it. I went back to California Creek to see if I could find it. I, I thought I turned our vehicles upside down. We turned the inside of our house upside down. And you want to know the funny thing? Allison called me. I'm in panic mode because I've got to turn these marriage licenses in. She calls me. She says, found it. I said, where in the world did you find it? We've turned everything upside down. She said, well, I got in the little car and underneath my Duke hat was the journal with the marriage license in it. Ah. Well, you all know I'm a North Carolina Tar Heel fan, so I'm blaming it on the Duke Blue Devils. I'm blaming it on my wife. But let me tell you something. In the end, it was my fault. I lost those marriage licenses. But praise God, we found them. So if my cousin's listening or my aunt and uncle's listening, we had a close call. But we good to go. So have you ever lost something in your life? Have you ever lost something precious? Or have you ever been searching for something that you're just trying to find to fill a void in your life? Let me tell you something. The only thing that's going to fill that void in your life is Jesus Christ. The only thing that's going to fill that emptiness that Solomon's talking about is Jesus Christ. Don't Now listen to me. When this is over with, don't call your buddies and don't put this all over Facebook and say, look, Pastor Josh is saying that we can't go out here and enjoy life. No Solomon in this passage or in, in this book, in a passage in this book, says that you and I need to enjoy this life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24, he says, there is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. You and I can enjoy the fruits of our labor in this life. Let me tell you something, friend. Everything that we enjoy is going to go away. It's not going to fill you completely. But I want you to understand that the truth of God's word 
teaches us that a relationship with Christ is what's going to fill us. And so if I were to uh, ask you the que a question, follower of Christ, why do you believe the Bible? Well, you know, one thing that comes to my mind is I believe the Bible because that's what I was taught since I was a child. I want to encourage you to, to read 2 Timothy 1.5. In 2 Timothy 3.15, Paul's talking to Timothy, a young preacher. You know what he says? Don't forget what them ladies taught you. Let me say, this is so important, uh, mamas, daddies, grandparents, that you instill a love for God's word, God's truth into their lives. You wouldn't be completely wrong if you answered and you said, well, my grandma said this word is true. The word is true. And Paul in the Bible said to Timothy, don't forget about what you learn as a little boy. But when we think about knowing and, and believing that God's word is truth, I like what John Piper said. Let me read a little quote, small quote. It says, God enables you to see. That's why you ultimately believe the Bible. Let me say, if you know Christ, you need to be in the truth of God's word. You need to be in the truth. You're not going to find anything in God's word that is false. What you're going to find is that uh, prophecies have been fulfilled. Every one that needs to be fulfilled for Jesus Christ to return has been fulfilled. Let me tell you something, man. God's word is truth. And I'm encouraging you to experience it for yourself. You may say, well, why in the world is God's word true? Yeah, grandma may have said it was. And now you're telling us that we need to experience it for ourselves. Well, let me say this. Only God's word successfully slays sin. I'm thankful that we read in the book of Romans that we're all sinners. I'm thankful that we read in the book of Romans that for the wages of sin is death. We all deserve a spiritual eternal death. But the gift of God, he says, is eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's to those who first believe. I'm thankful, thankful for the Bible, the word, the truth that fills that void, friend. And when you trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, when you allow him to come in your life and to be Lord, he fills the vanity. He feels the emptiness. And if you're at home tonight and you're really struggling and you feel lost and confused, let me tell you something. Turn the news off. Stop looking because each news outlet is different. You're going to hear something different. But let me tell you something. God's word is timeless. God's word is true. God's word was God breathed upon these 40 different people who wrote down what God wanted them to in the one complete book, 66 of them, over 1,500 years. It fits together perfectly like a red glove. Jesus is in every single book of the Bible. His word is truth. And when the world is crumbling, when the world is falling apart, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is the truth that you need to get through this thing called life. And so what are you searching for? What we understand in the Bible is that truth means it's what is true in any matter under consideration. Let me tell you something. There's things in God's word that's been revealed that's not up for debate. It's not up for a discussion. It's not up for, well, maybe we need to think about it. No, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is truth. I want to read something to you in the New Testament. You can just jot these things down. You can go home a little. You're at home. It's later on. It's raining. You can't get outside. You might as well read God's word. But listen to 1 John Chapter number one, verse number eight, it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Listen, man, stop fooling yourself. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We all put on these fronts like we got. Look at me. This is how we walk around, isn't it? 
got this in the bag. I'm good. I've got it. No, if we'd all be real, real honest with ourselves, the Bible even says we need Jesus. We need truth in our lives, and the truth is his word. You know, Jesus is the word. I'm going to finish with John chapter 1 here in a second. But stop. Stop deceiving yourself. Understand that you need the truth. Don't love the world. I want to read this to you. He says in 1 John 2, 15, love not the world. What are you in love with? Hmm. What do you love? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, it's just not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Man, I'm telling you, there's, you're, there's people listening right now. You're miserable, man. Men, women, children, you're miserable because... You've put your trust in a government. You've put your trust in your bank account. You've put your trust in a job. You've put your trust in a relationship. The only person and only relationship that you can really trust is Jesus Christ. That's it. There's nobody else. He says, don't love this world. Stop loving it. It's bringing misery in your life. And he says, and the world, listen, what's going to happen to what we put our trust in so often? The world, he says, is going to pass away, verse 17, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide it forever, man. Trust the word. And the word is truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. And I know there's a, there's a I mean, it's famous passage. I mean, you folks out there know it, but and you can't talk about truth without talking about John. In chapter number one, now I'm almost done. I'm going to let you go about your evening. I really appreciate you joining us, but I'm done. Just hang with me. John chapter one. In John chapter one, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Let me say this. The word created everything we see. The Word's been hanging out with God, and the Word come and hang out with man. Hmm. And the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made. Listen, by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. I'm telling y'all, you need to trust the Creator. You need to trust Him because He's truth. That's what John says. And, and like I say, man, there's a lot of people searching for truth, a lot of people... Um, are searching for life. And then what it says in verse 4, in him was life. Do you want to live? There are people listening to this tonight, and I'm passionate about this. You are dying on the inside because you are trusting what's going on out there in that world. Remember what he said? Do not love the world. Love Jesus, the word, the truth. And in any circumstance, any, any situation you're in, you have got to just trust the truth because the truth will set you free. And how many tonight want to let the chains of bondage just fall off? What you need to do is fall down right there, build an altar figuratively there in your living room, fall on your knees. And I want you to cry out to God and say, God, don't release these chains. Help me to stop trusting in these chains. And I want you to take them from me and set me free. I believe the word. I believe it's truth. I believe in your son, Jesus. And I need him to fill the emptiness in my life. Remember, have you ever been searching for something that you thought was lost? Never forget when my wife called and said, found it. I pulled over to the side of the road and I said, thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something, friend. When you find truth, and you allow him to remove those chains. You're truly set free in your soul. And it don't matter. 
what is happening around you in your life. It doesn't matter what happens to you physically because you know your soul has been set free. What is truth? Truth is his word. Truth is at your fingertips. Starts by saying, release these chains. Set me free. I love you, church. Keep your head up. I really appreciate you joining me tonight as I just went through a few simple scriptures. We could go a lot deeper and talk a lot more. I know you got things to do. I love you. Thank you for spending some time here with me as I'm in my comfy chair. I hope you have a great evening. I'm telling y'all there is some enormous things coming to California Creek Baptist Church. I'm encouraged. There's some things I've been praying about, talking with others about. You'll see, God has got this. There's a lot at the end of the tunnel. Keep your head up. And remember when the world full of lies is running its mouth, we serve a Jesus that cannot lie and is full of truth. I love y'all. And we'll see you this Sunday as we finish up, maybe finish up, Jesus walking on water. I love y'all. Go enjoy your families.